Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about why I decided to vote for Trump. Welcome to Tweety's Take. This election is really unprecedented. It's nothing that we've ever seen before, at least within our lifetimes and even within the history of America. We are seeing uh, our constitution being pitted against communism and socialism on a, on a large scale. Forever, America has been against socialism. It's been against communism. We fought against it in World War I and World War II. But now, even as we are forgetting our history and our past, Americans are starting to fight for socialism and for communism. You have these groups that are anti-fascist. You have groups that are on the far left that are saying that critical race theory is the only thing that's going to bring America together again. But instead, it's separating all of the American people, and we can see that huge divide now. What we see is the riots, the violence, and while there are plenty of people who are peacefully protesting and they have every right to do so, there are still those who are on the street rioting. So, right now, we have crazy tension between both of the political parties, the Democrats, the Democrats and the Republicans. I used to fall within the independents where yeah, I would vote for a Republican here and there and I would vote for a Democrat here and there. And really, I say I voted for them, but I never actually cast a vote. I never submitted my ballot. I'd fill it out, but I never turn it in. And it's because I never felt that it was truly important. I never personally saw the value of, of voting for people when they did not go with what they said. I mean, you see Obama, he promised so many things, and yet he fell so short and did his own agenda that the people were just totally disenfranchised by him. And even when President Trump became elected, I was very wary with his policies. I didn't believe that everything he promised he would do, he would do. Well, looking at how things have come, come along, we see that he's building the wall. It, I didn't expect that to happen. I thought that would be an empty promise. It was just something that he was using to pander to his base. But instead, we see that actively being done. He promised that he would make America first. And what, what do we see again? We see tariffs on China. We see these foreign companies or foreign interests are, are being hardballed by President Trump because he no longer wants to send our workforce to them. He wants our American work, workers to work for America in America, by the people, for the people. And I think that's, that's really smart. We need to keep our, our industry within the U.S. Um, so that we can build ourselves up. We see how many people are homeless, how many people are suffering, and where do we see the highest rates of these? Within the Democrat-run cities. You see Los Angeles. You see uh, even Kansas City. Um, you see Chicago, uh, New York. All of these major cities that are run by Democrats have heavy crime and heavy poverty. And it's not because, it's not because of Republicans. It's because of all of the social programs and because... They're focusing so much on it that they just exacerbate the problem. Now, President Trump instead has actually made cuts to welfare programs in different areas uh, and has cut federal funding in places where he believes that people should be pushed more to work harder. This is something that I, I completely agree with. Uh, I believe that welfare can be good as long as it is being used to push people forward rather than holding them back in laziness and making them comfortable in their poverty. I actually am benefiting from unemployment insurance as I was laid off from my company back in April, and they have never called me back. Now, also within the this pandemic situation, apparently I am not required to actively be searching for work, so I'm just waiting for a call back. But in the meantime, I'm also doing YouTube because... I realized that I was just going to become lazy. I realized that if I just kept on receiving these paychecks and I did nothing about it, 
then I could just sit on my butt all day and be with my family and no one is going to force me to work. I have no incentive to, especially back in the beginning when they are paying $600 extra each week. I was making more on unemployment than I was being employed. Um, So anyway, that's just highlighting the negatives of welfare. And yes, I was because of welfare, I was able to 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 start this channel and to really focus on it. And we were able to to do all sorts of things with my family that I would never have been able to do otherwise. But my point is I was not incentivized to find work. I was not incentivized um, to get back into the system. So I what I see in that area is, is I think, and this is kind of going off track uh, in a little bit, but I believe that these social programs need to have something where you can say, here, you're unemployed, here's your cash, but it's a loan. And so if you do not find employment or if you do not create your own business and start seeing profit from it, then um, within a certain amount of time, let's say six months, eight months, whatever the timeline is that 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 you decide on, then you owe all of that money back. Or if you find employment before that designated time, all of that is forgiven. And, and, you know, there's all these different scenarios that you can come up with different policies, but this is what Trump's doing. He's, He's trying to find ways to help people within the coronavirus during the pandemic but he's also trying to find ways to help people out of their poverty and telling the businesses to open. He's trying to open the economy, trying to get people off of their butts and back to work because he understands that people are less depressed when they work, whereas the left is trying to say, you are more depressed because of work. It's completely backwards. So specifically with Trump, these are the things that I see from him. America first. He doesn't want people to rely on welfare. While he wants to support people who have who have uh, been laid off from their jobs, he also wants them to still have more opportunities. Also, despite what the leftist media says, he is concerned about the American people during this crisis. He doesn't ask for a national mandate on masks because it's not constitutional. He gives that power to the states right where it belongs. And and there are some states that are taking that power too far, which is to be judged by the courts. And there are some states who are not doing that at all, but that's within their prerogative. It is not in Trump's domain to issue a nationwide mask mandate. That's exactly what Biden would do because he has no regard for the Constitution. And I think when you look at everything, Trump is more of a constitutionalist. I wouldn't say that he's perfect, but he is absolutely pushing for the American people and pushing to uphold the Constitution. He wants more education on the Constitution, which is the most important document ever recorded in history, aside from the scriptures, for our our freedoms, our liberties, our families, and our property. That constitution is what we stand on when we say, I believe that every man should be free. Without that constitution, slavery would not have been abolished as we see it today. We see so many, so many progressive movements that came from the constitution because it encourages freedom instead of inhibiting it. If Biden were elected president, he would strip away the protections that the Constitution gives. Guns would be taken from the people, as he stated, and they call it a buyback program, but really it's just taking away our rights and replacing it with this fiat currency that that really has no intrinsic value. It's just a piece of paper that he is using to buy off your property. As well, while his campaign has denounced the leftist rioters and violent protesters, he himself has not publicly stated or condemned these actions. Not really. Instead, he waited long enough to where it didn't seem like he'd be a threat to their cause. 
Black Lives Matter organization, Antifa, and all these other other violent groups were able to push their agenda so far without him condemning that it became the Democrat platform. And that's exactly what we'll see in the future if Biden becomes president. Their political party has been taken over by the political left. If you vote for him and you vote for the Democratic Party, you are really voting for socialism and communism, for critical race theory, for anti-constitutional ideals, instead of voting for the, the foundation for our country. They, t- they say, tear it down, burn it down. They say that the founding fathers were wicked, were evil. On the other side, you hear Trump saying that the founders should be respected. While they had their faults, we would not have the freedoms that we have today without those founding fathers and the principles for which they stood. They stood for sound government principles. But what we see on the left in the camp of Biden are people who are coming up with these theories that we've already tried before with social justice. All of this social justice that you hear today is exactly what the Nazis were calling for. It's exactly what um, what socialists and communist governments have been calling for from the beginning. It's just stated in a, in a slightly different way, a way that's a little bit sneakier. Now, I wanted to briefly touch upon the Biden scandal that's going on right now, uh, and I want to say this about it. Hate the sin and not the sinner. This phrase is probably familiar to you, especially you'll hear it from, you'll hear it from religious groups. Now, when that phrase is said, you need to remember that Biden and his son are still people. Everyone has sin. Every single one of us does things that are not good that we need to change and become better people from. So I'm not going to even touch upon the, the things that Hunter Biden has done. But what I'd like to say is that Joe Biden has proven that he cannot be trusted. While I'm not going to hate Joe Biden or his son, I have to be able to stand on moral ground and say, because these actions were taken, I know that Joe Biden is compromised. I know that he will not stand up for the American people and would rather be bulldozed over by these communist regimes such as the CCP. I'm able to draw this conclusion and say, fine, I'm not going to say that Joe Biden is evil. I'm not going to say that Hunter Biden is evil. It is not in my place to determine that. However, it is in my right to vote for someone else who is not so steeped in corruption. Because I know that if I do vote for that, that that I'm going to suffer because of it, because of my vote. So who am I voting for? I'm voting for Trump. Is he a perfect man? No. But he's not steeped in this scandal that we're seeing right now. He's not trying to collude with foreign governments. Instead, he's trying to protect the American people. Has President Trump said some horrible things? It depends on what you look at. There are very short clips, and you can make a judgment based off of those, or you can look at the bigger picture, at the actual, uh, the longhand script that it was taken from, and realize that the media has completely spun everything that he had said, everything that he has said, and and made it to be something evil when really it's not. He doesn't speak out against normal people. He speaks about those who are steeped in corruption in those who, who really perpetuate violent crimes in those who would want to take and strip away our liberties and our freedoms. To those people, he doesn't reserve kind words for, which maybe that's a flaw. But what I see from him is he is standing up for our country, for the liberties that we stand for, and he's not seeking to tax the American people to death, but rather giving us the freedom that we need to expand and grow. To me, that is the defining principle that I am basing my vote on, that I have based my vote on. I already cast my ballot. President Trump stands for freedom and liberty and growth. 
Biden, on the other hand, calls for shutdowns for for business in foreign countries and for the American people's liberties, especially religious freedom and the ability to speak out in the freedom of speech to be totally censored. So that's my reasoning. For this election, I'm not basing my vote on, on personal character. Everyone has their faults. Rather, I am judging this election based on the amount of peace, prosperity, and liberty that we have seen in these past four years. I say peace, obviously there's violence, but where is that coming from? It's coming from the political left. Where's the peace coming from? From the political right at this time. Under the Obama-Biden administration, we were under perpetual war. Under Trump's administration, he has been pulling troops out, and we have seen peace abroad, especially in the UAE agreements. So that is where I'm basing this election and my vote on. It's on peace, prosperity, and liberty, and where that lies within the political spectrum. And for me, that lies squarely on the shoulders of President Trump. Now, if you have any questions for me or anything else you want to add to the conversation, please leave that in the comment section below. I always read them and I always love interacting with you. If you want to see more content like this in the future, please subscribe. And also, I'd like to say that I have a course on the Constitution. If you want to understand what is going wrong with America today, what has led to this point where we have the violent left and those on the right who don't know what to do about it, I highly suggest checking out my new course on thinkific.com. You'll be able to see the, the link in the description below. It's $49, but with that course, if you take it, you will understand the true spirit of the Constitution and how to vote for officials and how to recognize laws that support principles of sound government. So please remember, check out that description box if you're interested. Check out the link in the program and I'm sure you will not be disappointed. So more content will be coming forward in the future. I will be back to a regular schedule. Thank you for watching and for all of the support that you guys have given this channel. It's been truly amazing to see. My name is Addison Tweedy. This has been Tweedy's Take, and I will see you next time. Yabasia.